Marcus in Cologne, Germany. I wonder why a streamer needs a clock. As a software developer, I would like to think that the streamer just accepts data from different sources, pushes the data to the DAC, which has a buffer, and knows what clock to apply for the type of data it gets from the streamer. Yeah, I I'm with you, Marcus. I, I, I get it. Let's look back a little bit over history and just give you a little bit of a primer on how things worked for the longest time, how they still sort of work. Let's take, instead of a streamer, let's take another data source, a CD player, okay? So, I mean, in a way, they're both sources, right? So a streamer is a means of connecting to a server somewhere, and there's a data file on that server, and you connect, and that data starts flowing, okay? Now, as that data flows to the streamer and then eventually goes to the DAC, there is no clock associated with that data, right? Okay. In a CD player, it's the same sort of thing, but instead of going to a file on a distant server, we have an optical disk. And on that disk, like the file stored on the, the, the server, there is no clock associated with it, right? It's just data. And our spinning disk and our hard drive somewhere off wherever it is has just data that begins streaming. Now, at one point, we're going to have to connect that data to a clock. So traditionally, what happened, let's take CD players again where we started, that clock was provided by the CD player because that CD player knows what sample rate, what bit depth, all that it's supposed to be, and the master clock traditionally came from the CD player, went to the DAC, and that became the master, which is why for many years we made separate transports and put so much time and effort into building what we call a digital lens. This is a basically reclocking device that has a fixed clock on the output, not a variable clock, and, and a buffer, a variable buffer before the clock so that the data coming in at different speeds collects up in here and then we spit it out in appropriate master clock fashion with no jitter. That was very important and it will always be important wherever that master clock lives. Now today, that still is the protocol of how this works for streamers, for CD players, but most DACs, like our DACs, take this data in and then reclock it once again. And so it's being done multiple times. And we're working on new technology always. So how does Paul say this without giving away any secrets? I don't know. But if we were working on such a thing, um, we would be looking at multiple clocks. We would be looking at multiple ways of clocking, reclocking. I mean, take direct stream DAC. That thing has, I mean, it, it has multiple clocks. It reclocks all the time. Where, you know, it, it's just all part of the process today. Years ago, that was not part of the process, but now it is. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how that whole hierarchy got to where it is, and it's still kind of that way, but less important today as, as new DACs come out the door. Okay, thanks. Take it easy. Thank you.